Hello everyone, it is the analyst Alakazams, former coach of the Alabama Alakazams, here with the Charleston Chesnots this week for week six What's up, everybody? Pick, oh, for week six pickums of the PBO. All right, how are you feeling about uh, these pickums? Um, so far we got a lot of close games this week. Um, I can't really think of any matchups that are like entirely one sided right now. Um. Yeah. All right. We're going to start off with a game of the week uh, with the Frederick Klefkies versus the Muchen Embors. So the Klefkies are 5-0, and an impressive 5-0 and since the last time we saw them at 2-0, and plus 17. And last week they put off a pretty good showing against Philadelphia, made good use of a Spectre that game, had a pretty uh, neat Feather Dance Talonflame from what I remember correctly. Meanwhile, uh, Moochin ended up losing to the Durants, uh, 0-2. Uh, kind of just uh, had a difficult time uh, in that game dealing with the threats, uh, specifically Latios, I believe. Uh, Carmine Latios was pretty challenging for them that game. So, you know, looking into this uh, week, I think, you know, Roaring Moon is a pretty decent answer uh, to uh, Klefkies in terms of, like, offensive threats that Moochin can have. Uh it really hits everything pretty strong with Earthquake and Knock Off and uh, Dragon Dance plus Dragon Move. But uh, obviously there's Fortress there. Max Defense Fortress could be a problem. And then uh, the ever-famous Air Balloon Tinkaton that Klefkies likes to run. Uh, I think whenever I see Tinkaton from him, it's a lot of the times Air Balloon. Um, Typhlosion Isui has, like, a decent match this game. I think Mamoswine has a pretty good match this game. You know, Mamoswine hits everything hard. Again, only really Fortress and maybe, like, Appleton post-Terra can really uh, stand up to it. I do think Appleton has a good match here with, like, a defensive set that Terra ferries um, to try and get out of uh, its uh, dragon weakness. That can be pretty good for Roaring Moon. It can be pretty good for Mamoswine. Uh, pre terra could probably take a hit from Keldeo, like it could be your uh, Water Resist, which could be nice. Offensively for Clef Keys, I like Iron Hands a lot. Its coverage with Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Drain Punch is just really deadly. There's really nothing that really wants to take those hits, especially if like the last move is Earthquake. You could be running a Salt Vest to take a Keldeo hit or a Hisui hit. Or, you know, you could come in on Zapdos if you're a Salt Vest, maybe. Because, uh, you know, those Hurricanes, they can miss, and they're also just neutral, which is really nice. Um, I think I'm definitely uh, feeling uh, like Klefkies has a pretty decent uh, match here. Both teams have, like, their their options, but I think Klefkies don't necessarily need to set up to be super successful. Like, obviously, Zangoose could be pretty deadly from um, Embors, but I think Fortress is, uh, again, pretty good this match and just stopping some of those uh, offensive physical attackers from really getting uh, their full potential off. And I think like the likes of Iron Hands, Samurai Hisui, and also like Spectre, uh, the offensive uh, pressure I think from Klefkis is just much easier to produce. What are you thinking? Um, So I'm thinking a couple things here. Uh, first off, Spectre looks actually incredible in this matchup. There are two Ghost Resists on uh, Munich's team, being Roaring Moon and Insane and Zangus. Um, Roaring Moon just gets outsped by Spectre and completely demolished by Draining Kiss. It's, it just, it does not care. Um, Zangus is a slightly better answer and would probably be the biggest threat I'd be trying to prepare for if I'm orange here, because <clears throat> Zangus, it gets Fire Punch, so Fortress is, like, actually not an issue for it. Um, at, but at that point, it might start after worrying about 4 Moose Slot Syndrome, because it needs Facade. It needs it would some... probably like quick attack. Yeah, so fire um, punch it, swords. It needs, it needs fire punch for fortress. Um, but then with with that, um, how much is Spectre? I don't know how much Spectre actually takes from fire punch at plus two, but if uh, it's I, not doing enough, I would just might even eighty probably something. Like, oh wait, faint attack isn't in the game anymore. Um, so he that would even he gets night slash. Help. Oh, it, it, it gets knock off. What am I saying? Knock off, yeah. Um. Okay, so it gets plenty of moves. <clears throat> Zangoose looks like the single biggest threat, and honestly, I'm not even sure if it needs to be Terra normal in this matchup. Maybe it does for Iron Hands, I'm not sure. Um, but it also gets Terra ground. 
So like that would let it be neutral to a couple hits. But it, to be fair, if it does Terra something other than, than normal, then Spectre are just kind of six O's. So maybe it will stay normal for, simply for the defensive purposes, which I never thought I'd say about a Zangus. But um, it really does have a really nice matchup this game, especially because it can't get flame body by Talon Flame because of Toxic Boost. And it should be able to just power through something like Appleton or Quillfish. Yeah, I, I think Zangu should probably be running Sword Stance, Facade, Quick Attack, and then probably Fire Punch, like you said. So obviously that would mean Spectre would have to have a little bit of chip, but it would really only need to be like 20% before he could like fully get one on. Um, yeah, that would have to be mostly from Hazards, and the thing about that is... Actually, Durant's has some good Hazard yeah, pressure. He's, he's got a good Hazard setter, Skarmory, spikes. Sand Slash. He's got Spikes already, he's got Mox. Yeah. So yeah, it, it shouldn't be an issue to get Hazards up. Um, especially because Fortress can probably be punished by uh, a lot of Munich's team just by uh, <clears throat> being aggressive on switching out on a spin. I, I do think, like, a Muck isn't... Like, if it's Assault Vest, knockoff Muck, I really don't think that's, like, a terrible Spectre answer. I'm assuming Shadow Ball probably does, like, 30, if I had to guess. Uh, somewhere something, in the, something like that. Something like 28 to 37. I, that, that's just, like, a guess based on roles I've seen in the past of Pokemon. Uh, but I do agree that Spectre has the potential to really uh, be crazy this match. I, I think it's like Spectre and Iron Hands on Orange's side, and then like Mamoswine, uh, Zangus. Uh, I think Typhlosion and Sui is like, again, not terrible here. Uh, that kind of thing is going on for M Wars. Who would you uh, pick, personally? Um... I mean, quite honestly, this is going to be a volatile match revolving around uh, pretty much one threat, or probably two threats on either side. Um, but I think the difference maker here is that Orange's threats seem to be a lot easier to get set up. They just yeah. kind of come in and click buttons. That's what I was Whereas thinking. for, yeah, for Munich's team, they kind of have to click a Swords Dance if you're Zang Goose, or maybe even get a Trailblaze up if you're Mamoswine. Um, so I'd have to say, the game looks a lot easier for Orange to play, and so for that, I'd probably have to give it to him. Maybe probably like... 60 40 even yeah I, I i agree i think 60 40 in orange's favor just because i think the game's easier for him to play we have seen munich come up with some really creative sets to tilt it in his favor when his team isn't like looking at it like it has the most incredible matchup so i believe he can do it but just based off of matchup i'd have to go orange just on ease of play for sure because like zangus who's the biggest threat is also always on a timer right and there's a rough yeah. skin guard chomp there too so you know how long can zangus even last to because if you click facade and he like switches in spectre then you take a poison turn and then he switches back out when you click fire punch into something that resists fire punch and you waste another poison turn it, it's true. It, it's really it's really um what's it called time dependent you got to be really precise with zangus to get maximum value yeah all right with that we'll move on to the next game we have uh, a battle of the philadelphia flygons who lost the klefkies uh oh three last week uh started off pretty strong their rotom mo was doing pretty good and they kind of collapsed under the pressure of spectre uh in the middle of the game and then we have the pittsburgh scissors who have undergone a massive team shift after beating the new jersey dracos last week uh a lot of the Pokemon that were in that game uh, are gone now. Uh, so looking at this matchup, I have to say, I think uh, Pittsburgh has a few odd Pokemon now. Um, Petron is gone, you know what I mean? And I think it actually makes things a little bit easier for Flygons in terms of like Blood Moon being able to do something here. Uh, there's really not a great Blood Moon switch in because... Uh, if, if you bring Registeel in, I feel like Registeel... Like, if you click Blood Moon and Registeel comes in, I think Blood Moon's actually still in the prime position to, like, either click Calm Mind and, like, start setting up on Registeel, which would be really bad, because if he's just Seismic Tossing, you can just Moonlight that off, and all of a sudden you're in a really bad position. I think with, like, one Calm Mind, Blood Moon actually looks really devastating this match, um, which would... It would have to be, like, Glaceon that comes in. I don't really know if I love that. Because if you have a Calm Mind, you probably live a Blastoise hit and then kill it with Blood Moon. Uh, I, the more I look at it, the more I think like the standard Calm Mind Blood Moon set is actually pretty dangerous this game. It would be Dark Ride that has to come in and click Ice Beam to try and kill it. But if it has one or two Calm Minds up, I don't know if you want to sack Dark Ride just to get 70 to 80% on Blood Moon. 
I think Bax has like, you know, an okay matchup, a pretty good one. Not like fantastic, obviously, because Comfey's there has priority with the draining kiss. So I feel like Terra Fairies, I'm assuming that draining kiss does like 40 to 50%. Um and then obviously there's like uh Blastoise who's you know got pretty good defense. So even if he's at like plus one, I'm sure he can take like one glaive rush, but I don't really know what it'll do back. I guess it could click Aura Sphere. I'm pretty sure Blastoise gets that now. I I know yeah, it does. It does. Um so I, I, I actually kind of like, because so, so like if I'm looking at the offensive threats for Pittsburgh, Darkrai, uh, I, I I fear that Darkrai might have some issues um, with priority in this game, go, causing issues. I, I do think it, it, like Darkrai can just spam Dark Pulse, which is nice because the resists are like Halucha and Wigglytuff, which obviously aren't the best resists. So you could probably spam. So you could probably spam just some dark moves if I had to guess. Uh, but o overall, I do feel like Flygons has uh, more offensive potential here. What are you thinking? Um, I think Flygons' offensive potential is definitely a lot easier to get going, or at least it's a, it's a lot more obvious. Um, because we haven't even talked about Bax yet. Like Bax absolutely runs through this team. Uh, like Reggie Steel, especially since it's not Terra, it's not really going to be doing that much. Like if it switches in on an SD from Bax, Earthquake is probably like almost killing it, if not just outright killing it. Um, <clears throat> which makes it really, really hard for uh, Pittsburgh to be doing much about it. But I do think I see one saving grace for Pittsburgh in this matchup. And you were talking about Blastoise in a defensive capacity, but I think offensive shell smash Blastoise actually goes really crazy here. Um, if you look at it, it, um, it can only fit three moves, so it has to be careful. It needs a water move for Iron Moth. It needs an ice move for, I think, like, Halucha, Ursaluna, uh, and Cyclozar. And then it needs, like, Dark Pulse for Slow King. And that's pretty much enough coverage to hit, to hit everything pretty hard once it gets chipped a little bit. Um, Bax is kind of annoying, but you can't really afford to fit, or fit Aura Sphere over Dark Pulse because Slow King would be even more annoying if you were Aura Sphere. So I think with a little bit of chip on everything, Shell Smash Blastoise can actually clean up a game really well. Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely a way that Pittsburgh could go about this. Um, I worry that setup might be the only way that Pittsburgh could really win this, whether that's Blastoise or, like, Comfey, who I don't think is terrible as a setup Pokemon here, although Scizor is here and he doesn't have fire, so he has no way of really hitting it. So he'd have yeah, to tear Cizor and Moth, but like Moth, I guess if you're Terra Ground, yeah, he's he's issue. gonna probably be Terra Ground would be my guess. But then again, you have Ice Shard then, then, Bax that, after yeah, that. Yeah, then you're weak to Bax. So it's really hard. Um, honestly, Tauros could be a way to do it. Um, yeah, because Terra like... Tauros is unresisted outside of Scizor and Knacklestack. If Knacklestack tears, then it's just Scizor, and Scizor doesn't have a Roost anymore. So it's getting to it KO'd by Body Slam if it Terra Normals. Yeah, you could run like maybe. I don't know, Sword Stance, Tauros, or like just. I think just. Life Orb. I don't even know. I don't think you need it. Just Sheer Force Life Orb. Yeah, Sheer Force Life Orb with Body Slam. Uh, You could run Flamethrower. It has Flamethrower, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. Uh, Either that or Fire Blast. But Body Slam. Yeah, it's not Flamethrower. It's Fire Blast. From Adamant into um like a little bit of HP Scissor, or just into no HP Scissor, is a guaranteed to a KO. So like honestly, it might not it might not even be needed. I don't know. Tauros does look like another really potent offensive threat if you can get it in against like the Slow King or even the Blood Moon because if you can get Sheer Force Life Orb Ice Beam off on the Blood Moon, yeah, Ice Beam, um, it's thing. gonna chunk it for sure. Um, yeah, I definitely oh, wow, really. That's not doing much with anything actually. Okay. So yeah, I think um, Tauros is definitely a way to win this game. Uh, it, it could serve as a really good breaker for some, for something like Blasters to come in and clean up in, in an endgame scenario. Yeah, uh, that could Especially work. if Slowking tries to take the hit, and then maybe if you run Aura Sphere for backs, because that's not going to come out to the end of the game, um, you don't have to worry about the Slowking because it's chipped. I kind of doubt that, but maybe you can even get another Shell Smash on the Slowking, so I don't know. 
I don't know if Halucha has a lot of runway here, just because, you know, there's Landorus who can, like, intimidate, and there's also Rotom Heat, obviously. Um, if it's Swords Dance, uh, I don't know if it has, like, a super great chance of sweeping in any, like, major capacity. I think uh, maybe a defensive U-turn set could hold value if he's just, like, pivoting around. Because uh, I do believe, like, if he's outspeeding Tauros, that could obviously have some good value there. Um, I don't know. I'm just feeling like Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh has a hard time, like, getting into uh, the best position while Flygons can kind of just send out Blood Moon and automatically get a good position. Or, like, backs. Yeah, I agree. I think this is it's going to be an uphill battle for Pittsburgh, but it's also not impossible at the same time. Yeah. Um, like Philadelphia definitely has, I think, the easier matchup here. I'd give this like similar to last game, like a sixty forty, maybe even sixty five thirty five. Yeah, I was thinking sixty five thirty five in terms of Flygon's favor. If I had to put a number on it, right? It's just uh, the offensive threats from from Philadelphia are so much easier to get off and much more obvious and easier to play than it is for Pittsburgh's team, which is going to revolve a lot around positioning and probably pivoting, which his team doesn't have... He's got like I know, it, 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 it does have a good amount of pivoting. It's got flip turn Latios, which is good. u turn Land Lando is the tried and true classic. Yeah, Lando doesn't have a terrible matchup here. Like, uh, the only ground uh, resists are Halucha and Rotomo. So you can kind of just Rotom does not want to eat a U turn. Yeah, Rotom doesn't want to take a U turn, and uh, Halucha doesn't really do anything to you, so you can just U turn out on it. I I, I feel Honestly, like Smackdown Lando could go crazy. Yeah, I don't even know if you need Smackdown. I think you just fire an EQ, not. and if Halucha comes in, you're like whatever about it. You know what I mean? It's like fine in the long run, probably. I guess. Um, yeah, I I do like just spamming Earthquake, kind of from Lando. Uh, it, it's definitely not bad at all. Um, obviously, when, if Knackle Terra's out of rock, then maybe it can come in, but because uh, it'll be like max defense, maybe. But maybe. definitely overall, I think 65 35 in the Flygon's favor. Moving on to the next game, we've got the Charleston Chesnots versus the New York Malamars. Last week, the Chesnots beat the. Uh, Scream Tales now grottles 1 0, and the um, using uh, Lycan Rock uh, mainly after uh, Lycan Rock and uh, Wo Chien pretty er in the early game. And uh, Malamars lost to the Agrons 0 2 uh, again in a game where he kind of had the momentum early, and then Pelipper went down, and it was kind of downhill from there. Dragapult really put a number on him without Floor just being there to uh, take some hits. Uh, it, he couldn't really have any answers to the Dragapult because he doesn't really have great ghost resists. Speaking of not great ghost resists, uh, Miss Magius uh, could be pretty good here. I think, uh, personally, I like Under Iron Bundle a lot. Because of its uh, ability to freeze dry the likes of Pelipper and Gastrodon, and it can you know pop off freeze dries against Floatzel as well, and Torn T. And if it specs, uh, I think like Ice Beam is also fine. You can fire off Ice Beams because his Ice Resist is like he's got Iron Crown. Who if he's setting up uh, Rain, then you know can fire off Hydro Pumps, and he doesn't really want to take Hydro Pumps at all. Uh, I think Floor just is pretty important in this match for the Malamars. Uh, for just probably max spadaf just to take those hits from uh those really important threats the special threats that uh chestnuts have i think rillaboom is pretty good this game because of its grassy glide for bundle for rotom wash for lycan rock dusk that grassy glide can be really uh key but obviously wheezing galar could take a, a hit from uh rillaboom if it wants and rillaboom really can't do much back especially if it's levitate because stopping tantrum then wouldn't work so they'd probably just have to u-turn out uh, Floatzel is obviously very uh, damaging for uh, Chesnots. He doesn't have a great answer other than Wo Chien, but if Wo Chien Terra is out of its uh, resist, obviously that would cause uh, mayhem for Floatzel. So uh, it's really all about you know some key uh, defensive pieces trying to block certain offensive pieces, and if those pieces get uh, whittled down or break, 
then the one uh, offensive piece can really uh, pop off. But this is your game, so uh, what are you thinking? Um, I don't want to spoil too much, uh, because I know Zob will be watching. I don't know when this is going, so I don't want to risk anything. But uh, yeah, Miss Maggie's does does definitely look really scary. Um, Bundle I think is a little bit less threatening than everyone kind of makes it out to be every week because Bundle's the kind of mon where you can usually take something that ease hits neutrally, throw an assault vest on it, and then it's a pretty good bundle check. And that's kind of the case this week. Like our child on Tornadus, uh, Crown, uh, even even without AV Florges, they can all like start eating hits from bundle in the right scenarios. Tornadus probably less so than the others, just because like it is still weak to ice, and if it's AV, it's weak to rocks. So uh, it's just it makes it a little bit harder. But even then, uh, bundle is just uh, it's pretty hard to get in a lot of the time against a team like this that moves so quickly. Um, like Rillaboom, Rillaboom and Pelipper clicking U-turn whenever it tries to come in. Um, Aleki outspeeding it naturally. Uh, Floatzel outspeeding even max speed booster speed bundle. Uh, it just makes it really hard for bundle to actually come in uh, at any given time until kind of an end game scenario. So um, it, it kind of bundles, so, like, even though in a, in a game like this it looks really, really, really good, uh, it can still sometimes have an uphill battle just simply because of uh, opponent prep. And um, I think sometimes people can kind of like depend on bundle too hard and get taken advantage of it. But I think what's also important in, the, in this matchup is that uh, Dragalgy looks kind of insane because uh, Malamars did the thing this season where your steel type does not resist dragon. And that means that Draco Meteors from Dragalgy can be pretty free sometimes, especially because his answer is Florges and that does not want to eat a sludge bomb. Okay. So, like overall, uh, he what? does have Iron Crown. I will say that. Oh, you are correct. I completely, you are you are correct. Um, but to be fair, if Iron Crown starts getting chipped because it it doesn't have any, any recovery, um, then that means it's not answering bundle as well as it as it would want to be. Um. Yeah, I agree that also Sans Iron Crown Dragology is good, but Iron Crown is a pretty yeah. good check. Uh, overall, I would say. Yeah, but also if Iron Crown is around. It's always a free flip turn. Like, if Iron Crown is around, uh, Dr Dragalgi, Dragalgi can just click flip turn, and then it's a free Miss Magius because M Miss Magius outspeeds it and can just click Shadow Ball and get a kill. Yeah. So uh, I think this this is definitely going to be, I think out of all the games we've seen today so far, this is going to be the most volatile game. Um, yeah. Because the threats have never been more threatening, but um, the, like the moment the checks go down, it's just kind of over. Like this is This is probably going to be like, a 5-0, a 4-0, uh, either way, whoever wins. I, I can't imagine this being that close. Yeah, we'll see. Um, it, it is interesting how it always ends up uh, with Za, because all his games, you know, just by the nature of rain, seem very volatile, and then his games end up being very close. But I could see, you know, Pelipper goes down early, and all of a sudden the game kind of gets blown out of proportion for uh, him. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, this is kind of a hard game to call. I don't fully know what our Caledon's role is going to be this game. If it's going to be like a, a defensive, maybe like iron defense body press set. Uh, I don't really know if that's good at all. I think assault vest is all right, but I don't really love its ability to take the shadow balls and the ice beams consistently from bundle and miss Magius uh unless floor just is giving wish support you know what i mean which um uh is asking a lot from floor just to then take all the special hits and instead of getting the wishes itself it's supporting the wishes to the team it would give floor just a lot of importance in the game i don't know if don fans coming at all because you want to stop you know hazards or you want to stop a lucky from just vaulting around forever uh, obviously wo chien can come in on the uh grass moves but uh, Volt is just free initiative into something that has U-turn, a la Rillaboom or Torn T. And obviously, like we said, we don't want Wochian to Terra. So if Wochian has to switch out again, then you can kind of get trapped in a cycle, which makes me think Don Fan might come. But obviously, Don Fan is in a dangerous position against a team full of water types and, you know, a really strong grass type as well. So um, maybe Malamars could take advantage of that and try and uh, do a Volt U-turn kind of thing. Um, I... I, I, I I, I probably like 
chestnuts here ever so slightly if I had to pick. I think uh, Malamars is having a tough time so far this season. Uh, rain and just in general weather hasn't done very well in the PBO for a long, long time. Uh, it's it's easy to not necessarily take advantage of, but it's easy to exploit uh, in like a certain way. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think so far, like given that this is a really volatile match and I think our threats are just as easy to pull off as the other ones, uh, I think this is probably just a straight 50-50. Like I, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't be surprised to see this game end either way. Yeah, I, I think I'll go 55 Charleston just to pick a side, but I agree that this game could swing either way for sure. I, I, I do... That, that strategy I just kind of thought of right at the end with a lecky, I, I would try that if I was Malamars, something along those lines. And with Arcaladon, I would try something very creative, get really creative with it, because I don't fully know what its role is this game. Instead of the yeah. Assault Vest stuff, let Florges be the special wall, fully Florges and Gastro maybe, like have two special walls or have uh, a AV Rillaboom instead, and let Arcaladon do something really creative uh, this game to try and, you know, catch some sort of wild card. That would be my hope. All right. On to the next game. We have the New Jersey Dracos versus the Vancouver Valiants. So last week, the Dracos uh, lost to the Scizors, uh, 1-0, 0-1. Uh, they came in with uh, Electrode, Terra Electric, because uh, Scizor's best ground type was a Dug Trio, so I think that was kind of a cool idea. But uh, uh, it was a close game, but he, he, just some of the end game sets, the Dio speed was saved for the end and it had no attacking moves. Last Mon Electrode versus Rotom Heat, it just, it just, the end really didn't go, he didn't preserve the Mons he needed to preserve to win that end game. His Terrapagos did get crit. If his Terrapagos didn't get crit there, I think he probably does win that game. Um, the the Valiants did win last week. It was much closer than it probably needed to be. Annihilate, uh, Assault Vest Annihilate kind of just went crazy. He was just kind of sacking stuff to uh, Valiant to win the game. But, you know, he had Glamora. The Glamora Hazards did what they were supposed to do because uh, Neuburns had no hazard removal. And Annihilate kind of came in. And I like, even though it wasn't a sweep, actually got five kills kind of just picking stuff off after they took Hazard Chip. So, you know, it, it was a de de decently impressive showing, I'd say. In terms of this matchup, um, you know, the, the defensive backbone on the Draco side isn't, like, good in, like, any real capacity. It allows, you know, a potential Scarf Kiram with, you know, the Ice move to do uh, something really dangerous. The answer would be Orthworm because Orthworm can block ground moves. So uh, that could be uh, really, really cool. I think Sneasler, you know, has an okay matchup here, actually, if you have the Acrobatic set. Because obviously Annihilate walls without the Acrobatic set. But if you're uh, Acrobatics plus the Gem plus Swords Dance... Annihilate is actually uh, kind of in a trouble there in that situation. I think Volcarona is pretty good this game. Uh, bug move spam plus like Giga Drain, Fire move, Quiver Dance. You know, that coverage is really, really dangerous for Dracos. He actually doesn't have a switch in is uh, what I'm noticing. He has no realistic switch in to uh, that coverage. Uh, I think Grimmsnarl is really, really good, both for blocking the psychic moves and getting up screens to stop Draco's onslaught of offensive versatility. Vaporeon can kind of stop Crook and Colossal, and, you know, potentially take a hit from Prim too, although it can't really do anything back to Prim. Uh, I think Annihilate, even though there's a bunch of psychic types, might actually be necessary to, you know, block a Terra Star Storm. Treads is there, but Treads can get Flamethrower and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe Annihilate could just be like, instead of being set up, it could just be like offensive, either Bandit or like Expert Belt or AV again, something like that. Just something that wants to come out and hit moves, do uh, big damage. Um, that's kind of how I'm feeling about the game. I think, you know, Primarina is pretty dangerous for uh, Vancouver. Uh, he doesn't actually have, like if you look, Kiram, Treads, Annihilate. You know, Vaporeon can't do anything back. Lamora, Grimmsnarl, all those guys. Uh, Volcarona, all those guys get hit super effective by Primarina. 
So, uh, Primarina actually yeah. looks really, really dangerous if it can be like a sub calm mindset or something with uh, water move, fairy move. I, I think Primarina is perennially underrated in draft league. I think it's really crazy good. Um, Crocodile can do something, especially if Vaporeon isn't there. Uh, Terrapagos, again, no Annihilate goes pretty crazy. Uh, Sneasler has the potential to sweep always, and I think in this game, the defensive pieces aren't necessarily there to stop it, other than like Vaporeon and like a defensive Volcarona could be pretty devastating with Flame Body. Uh, what are you thinking about this game? I think that um, Jersey's threats are a little bit more threatening than we gave him credit for. Uh, what I think happens with Sneasler here, I think Sneasler looks really, really good in this game. There is nothing on Vancouver's team that takes the combination of Poison Jab, Close Combat, and Shadow Claw. Annihilate at plus two, even if it's max HP, takes minimum 95% from Shadow Claw. Uh, everything else just kind of dies to stab moves. And I don't know. Volcarona, you said that was really threatening, but an important thing to note is even at plus one's max speed, Deoxys speed still outspeeds it by, I think, like 12 points. Um, and it can just, and that makes like a meteor beam set look kind of really threatening into this team. Because you can just run like meteor beam, expanding force, focus blast, um, and then something else. I don't know. I, I haven't like thought through that part of it uh, a ton yet. But Deoxys speed can revenge a Volcarona very easily if it's running the right spread. And I think Terrapagos, if it's at full HP, can revenge uh, a Volcarona very easily. Pre-Marina, like you said, does look crazy. Like, sub calm mind, and then maybe, like, Draining Kiss and Surf, or even, like, Psychic Noise or something, uh, could go really, really crazy into uh, Vancouver's team. It's just, the more I look at this matchup, the more I want to put it in, in Jersey's favor. Yeah, I think this could definitely go slightly in uh, Jersey's favor, for sure. I do think... Uh... He's probably going to need Brick Break on something, if I had to guess. I think Grim Snarl is really, really damning this game uh, for Draco's. I think the screens really suck for him because because he's so offensive. Screens are so uh, annoying uh, and very difficult to deal with. Um, That's true. I, I, I think the, the likes of... He's going to need Hazards to stop uh a potential sash glamora if he wants to sweep with sneezler because it's probably going to be earth power glamora if i had to guess um i i, I think uh there's there's a few ways that uh, like like roar vaporeon because vaporeon probably does live any sneezler hit if i had to <coughs> take a wild stab at it um at plus two i'm not sure about that oh at plus two it takes 90 to 107 from CC. So it's a roll. Yeah. So it, it really all comes down to, uh, I, I think Sneasler getting the right positioning. Or Annihilate. I think the more the more I look at it, I think if Annihilate gets under screens and it's like a bulk upset, uh, then it really does stand a chance. But the only thing, the thing standing in the way of that would be Deoxys speed yeah, I was, and DD. Yeah, I, I think just expanding force, even if he's like bulked up, yeah. even if he's behind screens and he has the light screen, I think it would still do like 70% if I had to guess. It's just too much damage. I, I, I think it makes it impossible for Annihilate to do that. Uh, and I disagree solely because that's a Deoxys speed. It has a tendency to either clean up in a late game or go down really early in the game. It doesn't really. It's not really around in that middle game scenario. Well, um, I think it, it would. So be, I, I think I, I think it would be in DD, especially because in DD well, is a in DD would be what I would be more worried about. I, I, but I, I think people Ndidi underestimate what in in DD can do in terms of damage. Indeedy is also. I, mean, I guess if it's Terra Psychic, it, uh, then it's weak to Rage Fist. But if it's if it hasn't Terra yet, then it's a uh, Strain Punch fodder. But then it's just a fifty fifty for the Annihilate while the Indeedy is clicking Expanding Force either way. So that yeah, that makes it really hard. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an interesting situation for sure. I do think Annihilate I mean, has. Kiram's matchup is really good still. Yeah, I think Kiram Force, has pretty Force good matchup. If it's a Def, could be annoying, but that's also a Kiram. So yeah, hard like to say. I, I, I think like Sabrina has calm lines up. I, I think like Kiram could like click Draco, and if Orthworm comes in, it would still take like forty. I would have to guess thirty to forty. Um, Something like that. I do think. 
there are some weirdier sets that could be interesting here. Um, well, that's a good if point. If I'm looking at it, there's no, there's no ghost type. There's on no Jersey's team. I can't ghost. imagine Colossal would come in this matchup unless you're trying to spin away Glamora Hazards, which I guess is possible. Because it is a Terra um, weirdier too. I feel like I don't know. my mind with weirdier always jumps to the the trick room last resort sets which seem gimmicky but the more i see them the more consistent they seem um and the more i like them especially into a team that's all about boosting its speed like this with deoxys speed sneezler yeah i don't um, hate to an extent trick room. to Rapagos, um just because of rapid spin and then ogre pond i think that could be something that's decent actually here um but i, I do agree that in terms of just pure offense the dracos have a better shot here than the valiants i would go probably 65 35 in favor of the dracos i might even go so far as to say 70 30 in, in favor of dracos um because i think compared to the other games we've seen today for vancouver to win this game he's gonna have to be a lot more technical than any of the other uh coaches so far yeah all right with that we're going to move on to the Garden City Grottles versus the Golden State Durants. So this is an interesting one. Um, I think that uh, Durants has a few pretty cool pieces here that can uh, help him win this game. I think Great Tusk looks pretty good here. Uh, the most obvious answers being Rotom Fan uh terra fairy who is decent in this game but uh ultimately if you bring rotom fan terra then you can't bring sinistra who i think is like a win con potentially although obviously arbeliva is here so if arbeliva just doesn't terra then sinistra can um not really do too much to it uh so maybe rotom fan just does come in order to at least uh, stop some of the great tusk uh, damage because you know with the, the ground and fighting coverage uh, it really does, you know, two-it KO everything on the opposing team. Um, Corviknight is here to stop Excadrill, which is unfortunate. Manaphy, uh, would have to have Energy Ball, Water Move, uh, and then Ice Beam with its, uh, either Tail Glow or, um, Calm Mind set in order to hit everything it would need to hit. I think Greninja is like, you know, a U-turn Dark Pulse set isn't bad at all with like perhaps a, a poison move in order to hit the Rotom uh, fan that Terra Fairies. I think that set holds value for sure. <coughs> Maybe Scarf to outspeed Meowth The Meowth could easily be Scarf itself. But Meowth also has trouble with uh, Corviknight. I think Corviknight kind of shuts down Excadrill and Meowth in ways that are very unfortunate for the Garden City Grottles. Uh, Latios, uh, if it's not like Max Spadef, like AV Glow King, is also pretty good this match because the dark type is Miascarada, so Luster Purges can kind of just come out in full force. Uh, I, I think he could run the, the very patented set that he likes, which is Calm Mind. And if he Calm Minds on the Glow King switch in and it is AV Glow King and all he can do is Ice Beam, he's in a really bad position. Uh, garden city grottles like what if it was calm mind recover luster purge uh with a cobra berry so that it could take a knockoff from meowscarada and all of a sudden the latios looks really really uh devastating i think um rabbit room has an okay matchup here i don't think it's like the best thing in the world <coughs> maybe it's terra arbeliva uh, and the Arbeliva just tarot's once Sinistra's dead or once they see Sinistra isn't coming. Um, overall, I think like Arcanine Hisui could kind of do something maybe this game. You just run Head Smash, right? The switch in is Great Tusk, but I don't know if you want to bring Great Tusk in if it's going to be one of your main offensive threats. I don't know if you want to bring Great Tusk in on Arcanine Hisui. The potential for a Will-O-Wisp or, you know, the Flare Blitz is very great. And then all of a sudden you're in a really tenuous situation that you don't love. Um, Zoroark Hisui, I think like a Scarf set could be really good. Outspeed Greninja, get a U-turn off. You know, trick something, trick them, get a Shadow Ball. Like, uh, 
but again, Arbaliva kind of proves problematic there. Like a, a special defensive Arbaliva proves problematic there. <coughs> um, I, I, I think like in terms of offensive threats, Manaphy kind of has to do something really big here. But, it, you know, Thunder Asterion is going to outspeed and do a lot of damage to it. I, I, I think Gar Grottles is going to have a hard time finding a way to get the damage they need to win this game. What do you think? I think that Meowth Garada has a bit better of a matchup than you were giving it credit for. Because, sure, Corviknight does beat it. I'll get, I'll give you that. But Meowth Garada doesn't really need a lot of moves. And so it, it can afford Switcheroo on a Scarf set. It can be like Flower Trick Knockoff U-Turn and Switcheroo. And that hits pretty much the whole team. Um, and then if Corviknight's Choice Scarfed, then it's not really doing anything to the rest of your team. It becomes setup fodder for stuff like Excadrill, or uh, Rotom Fan can come in a lot comfortably on it. Uh, the Simeon's not particularly afraid of it. I think uh, Nyasparata does look really, really dangerous here. Um, and I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I think the Rotom Fan might not even have to Terra to beat Tusk. Like, sure, sure rock moves exist. And but like when you Terra Fairy, you're taking sixty six from Head Smash, which is like the best option to hit it at that point. And th that that's from Booster Attack Tusk too. If it's not Booster, it's taking like even less. If it's Max, if your Max HP Rotom, it's taking fifty percent. So, I don't know. Maybe you don't even have to Terra Rotom and then Terra Sinistra has a niche. But I think something on Golden State's team that has a really really good matchup is Revivroom. It doesn't even really need to tear out. It just needs shift gear, obviously, and then iron head, high horsepower, and then a poison move. Probably gunk shot to get the KO on Manaphy. Um, looks incredibly dangerous in an end game scenario, especially if the Rotom fan is tearing. Um, nothing on the team wants to take that on except for like maybe some some kind of uh, Terra Sinistra. Yeah, it would have to be Sinistra and like Shoka Slowking would be the only thing. Right, those would be the only things. And I think Slowking should probably be a spinef set this game for the Latios and Gren. I think I agree. Uh, and, and the Thunderous. I think, so I think I Latios, think... if it's like that Calm Mind Colber set, could be very, very problematic. Maybe. It just it seems to me that uh, the only way for it to even like... Okay, to be fair, Slowking doesn't even really kill Red River back, right? Uh, it just gets hit twice and dies. Manaphy at least can eat a hit, uh, probably, and then do a lot of damage back with Surf or Scald. Um, but, like, uh, it's it's Terra Water, River Room, so, like, just bring Terra Water for the defensive matchup against Manaphy, and you're pretty much okay against the rest of the team. Yeah. I, I also I... think, I think Thunderous also looks pretty good if it's, like, Scarf U-Turn. Um, because Excadrill doesn't want to be coming in all that much because if you U-turn from Thunderous into like Tusk or Gren, then X extra drill immediately gets forced out again, and now you've chipped it, and then you're that much closer to like a Scarf Thunderous like Discharge or Thunderbolt Endgame, and it just looks really really strong to me. Yeah, I think Thunderous has a pretty decent matchup here too. I I, I like Golden State this game. I like Golden State seventy five twenty five. If I had to put a number on um... it. I'd probably go 65-35, because I do think Meowth Karata is, like, an actual demon this game. Uh, Manaphy, maybe if it's, like, an Acid Armor set. Like, Acid Armor Calm Mind. I don't know. I don't know if it has the coverage for that. I haven't, like... I don't know. I don't know what moves it would need. But maybe it can pull something off in that regard. Me Me Arcanine Asui can just nuke half the team. Like, Flare Blitz... Uh, is hitting everything except for like Latios, Lantern, and Crocolore, but none of those want to eat a head smash. So it just turns into 50 50s that are in the Arcanine's favor. Like, I, I agree, really Arcanine fast. is good. I think Arcanine Hisui is good. I think um, Manaphy needs Energy Ball, right? Otherwise, Lantern kind of smokes it. So yeah. it, it really needs Energy Ball, and I'm assuming you want a water move. So, yeah, because you need to hit Corviknight. Then how are you? Hitting then that Ar gets walled by Latios. Yeah, Latios yeah. and Arbaliva, right? So I think you need Ice Beam too. So I think you probably so have not. to be Tail Glow. Probably have to be Tail Glow. You have to be yeah. Tail Glow three attack if I, I were to. Probably. But even that that set doesn't look bad at all. It's no, like, I think uh, that's fine. Speed. 
Only thing is, you get re- you get revenge by Thunderous pretty easily because Thunderous is one on one speed. Yeah, and that makes it a little bit hard. Yeah, the Thunderous but outside is probably of that, be... there's not a great way to revenge it, like conveniently. Yeah, the Thunderous is probably gonna be max max speed. I have to I have to guess to outspeed yeah, Manaphy guaranteed. Just for Manaphy. Um, I think Zoroark also has a pretty good matchup. Like, yeah, it's decent. Your your Ghost Resist being Gren if Arbaliva well, has Terrid. Yeah, or if if, if Arbaliva has Terrid then that is like really really good for you i think but honestly Arbaliva, i think river room terra just looks better yeah i think arbaliva should come this game and i think it shouldn't terra if i'm being honest i think that's actually not bad at all is if arbaliva comes because it completely wall sinistra right if i'm uh, yeah it completely like p- puts sinistra like locked up in jail and it, it makes hisui uh, zoroark way worse and depending to on be fair, Man- it depending can't on Man- really do coverage. anything back to Sinistra, can it? Uh, it can sit there, and I, I can psych up if it's if Sinistra's going for Calm Mind. Um, it could probably go for. <coughs> I mean, I guess yeah. There's no there's no damaging move he could really pull off. Uh, Snarl. I think he gets Snarl, if I remember correctly. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I do like Durant's overall. Yeah, I, 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 I think all of their options are just way more dangerous for sure. All right, and with I that, agree. we'll move on to our second game of the week between two very winning teams, the Luscious Low Punnies, who are 5-0. and They uh, beat the Kyogres 6-0 last week with uh, Terra Diancy set up set. And... The Agrons, in a much closer game, beat the Malamars 2-0. They're 4-1 now uh, after getting rid of Pelipper and having Dragapult kind of go uh, crazy a little bit at the end of the game. So, speaking of Dragapult, I think Dragapult has a really good matchup this week. I, I think if you're just the, the Specs Shadow Ball set and you just fire off Shadow Balls, you know, th- things that uh, are your quote-unquote answers start taking 40%. With a Raquinid and Diancy, and then like you you can just switch out and then come back later, and you're whittling everything down. And you way outspeed everything, so you can be modest specs probably because uh, Low Pony's team is really slow. Other than obviously Blaziken, with the um, speed boost, I think Quick Wable has a pretty decent matchup this game. Uh, you can kind of just click Aqua Step. Uh, Hydreigon is a resist and Araquanid is a resist. I don't know how often you want Araquanid switching in, especially on physical moves. Because <coughs> uh, is Araquanid also switching in on the Dragapult? Because that's one of the Pokemon that can take a Shadow Ball. Um, I, I think like on Low Punny side, uh, Golden Go obviously has some issues with uh, Muck Alola, but other than that, it has an okay matchup. You can come in on Clefable. Clefable can't like Thunder Wave it. Clefable can uh, basically flamethrower it is its answer. Uh, I think Hydreigon has an okay matchup if it's like um, Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon, uh, I don't know if it can be set up because the Clefable will probably be unaware. If I had to guess for this game, it's going to be an unaware Clefable to stop Diancy, to stop uh, Blaziken set up, to stop uh, Raikou Calm Mind set up, that kind of thing. Um... I think, you know, Heatran's okay this game. I don't know if it's, it's the best game for Heatran. Uh, Diancy is there, and Diancy can tear a water, and then it's kind of uh, problematic for Heatran. Rhydon is it, kind of cool, like a Terra water Rhydon to catch Raikou. And then also, you know, it stays in on a Raquinid pretty well. It can stay in on Mudstaff if, if it has the Terra Blast. Even if it doesn't have the Terra Blast, it can stay in on Raikou or on Mudstaff just because it's... Uh, defensive presence if it's running that uh sword stance rock polish set again that can be dangerous um if it's terra water it can stay in on blaziken i think blaziken you know mary not necessarily relies but uses a lot of setup with like blaziken and raikou and like diancy so the fact that there's an unaware mon this time is pretty unfortunate um I, i do think blaziken you know has a decent matchup because uh it can run like Fighting coverage plus uh, fire coverage plus knockoff to hit Dragapult. 
and all of that coverage combined is like pretty decent. Obviously, Gliscor is still there. Uh, I don't know if you want to be Swords Dance or not with the Cliff Fable there. You could probably like power through Cliff Fable with Flare Blitz, but if you're Flare Blitz, you're kind of putting yourself on a timer a little bit. Um, obviously, if the Heatran is showing up and it's Flash Fire, then you're kind of like predicting between immunities, which is unfortunate a little bit. Especially if Gliscor is here too, because then if Gliscor has his Toxic Orb, uh, then you don't really... Uh, the nice thing about Gliscor is it's actually a knockoff absorber. So you can like come in on a knockoff once and then take it. And all of a sudden there's three Pokemon where you have to pick between those three Blaziken moves in order to make like a uh, decision kind of about what to click for what's useless and what's not useless against certain Pokemon, which can be very annoying for Mary. So if you've like watched all of Mary's games so far this season, a lot of the way she wins is a uh, Diancie and Blaziken and uh, Hydra like a, a lot of setup, a lot of kind of positioning for an end game Blaziken clean. I I, fi I I find it hard to imagine how she pulls it off this game. Uh, I think Hydreigon again, like I said, like maybe Specs or Scarf Hydreigon has a shot. I, I kind of like it, this game, uh, with, like, Draco and Flash Cannon and U-Turn uh, and Earth Power. Uh, I kind of like that. I, I don't remember if it gets U-Turn. I like. I want to say it doesn't. Um, I think Enamorous is, like, Scarf Enam is actually pretty good this game. You know, Fire Off Moonblast. He doesn't have a great switch in other than, like, Assault Vest Muck. And then uh, if you catch Heatran once with Earth Power, the game kind of just opens wide up. Moonblast actually probably two hit KOs everything on the team other than like spidef clefable heatran and cryogonal which makes and spidef gliscor but i imagine it does like 40 something to spidef gliscor if you're like modest scarf with enough speed to outspeed like not scarf dragapult so i actually do like enam i think that's actually a really key pokemon for mary is uh enamorous's ability to kind of bust open agron's uh defensive core because if you can get cliff fable down i think the game becomes way easier for mary i think blaziken opens up an opportunity to win with like uh just speed boost sword stance i think you know golden go uh yeah golden go still probably struggles but like hydreigon gets an easier chance to win as well uh so i i think like trying to break with an amorous and potentially get clefable low so that uh, blaziken can kind of open up an end game in some way that's kind of the way mary wins this what do you think um i think that mary definitely has some win cons here i think that i think that sub enamorous looks pretty good here um like i think if you run sub you run moonblast earth power and then superpower to hit the cryogonal um then things are looking a lot easier for you because with sub, you don't have to make those predictions on the heat train like you were talking about earlier. It just makes it a lot easier for Mary to to get things going. Um, I, I'm not sure about the calcs on like Clefable and Gliscor, um, how they handle Moonblast if it's a subset. Um, I imagine it's probably not as good as you want, so maybe sub isn't the option, but well, you see, it's hard to say. The thing about Gliscor is if you're... I actually do like the sub thing you mentioned. Uh, I don't know what Gliscor would actually hit. Like It'd probably have to be like Rock to right. a Rock Slide. It would have to, exactly. to hit the Enamorous. Clefable could probably break it. It would do 25. Enamorous is pretty... Uh... But then if you're Spideff Clefable, you're not Bizdef, which is uh, good for Blaziken. Right. I think the combination of Blaziken and Enamorous look really threatening in this game because I think... Personally, I think in this game, uh, maybe mixed Blaziken might be good. I think you need CC and you need knockoff. Um, but in terms of Fire Stab, it might be kind of a toss-up between Flare Blitz and Overheat for this game. Um... Because Overheat, I think even if Gliscor is Spideff, it's probably hitting it harder than Flare Blitz. Um, I think it all depends it on what you think the Clefable is going to be, right? you you got to kind of predict the Clefable and like it's what its uh, defense. Probably. So you want to try and hit it as hard as possible. Yeah, but it, if, it's, um, if it's unaware, that means it's not going to be... Uh, it's not magic guard, which means hazards are a thing unless it's boots. But against Mary's team, I wouldn't bring boots, which just means that like something like Mudsdale might actually be a little bit more important in this game, just for getting up rocks. Um, or even if you want to do like a spikes Dancy set, because it does get that move for some reason. Yeah, I, I spikes Dancy could be pretty good. I think if you brought a Raquinid with webs just to slow down Dragapult, that could be really, really cool. That, that could work. work. Dragapult is clear oh, body. Oh, clear body. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, Dragapult... Like, I, I do think Dragapult's very problematic this game, if I'm being honest. I agree. 
I think uh, I think Araquanid could be a decent answer to it. Like, I don't think AV Araquanid looks terrible, but like, there's a Gliscor right there that could get up rocks and spikes. So yeah, if you could... boots is like really annoying. Yeah. Um. So maybe. I I do lean Abbotsford. I think slightly, but probably. I think only slightly. Uh, um, I'm also, gonna... Terra Deancey might have a good niche this game. Um. Because, like, it can beat Heatran with Earth Power. It can hit Clefable really hard with uh, stab moves. Like, I'm thinking, like, offensive DNC this game, not even necessarily, like, setup. Like, if Clefable gets chipped at all, a, a Trick Room 3 attack set could go pretty crazy. Like, if it's, like, Meteor Beam. Because yeah. Meteor Beam is going to destroy Gliscor. Um... If you're not really afraid of Thwacky, Muck doesn't really do anything if you're like Terra Steel or Terra Water. Um, Electro isn't like basically what DNC is going to do is it's, it's going to kind of trade like two for one in an end game, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, I, I, I could see it. I, I do think like Clefable. I, I think Clefable is really key this game. And if Clefable gets low, it becomes way harder for Aggrons, right? Right, because like, like we keep saying Clefable, 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 but the thing is, it has so much on its back right now. Yeah. Um, there's a very good chance it could run out of those eight soft boils really quickly, and yeah. if, it, if it's like some weird soft boiled wish set, then that means it's like out of moves to check. Yeah. Everything. Moonblast, no fire coverage for gold, and it, it, yeah. if it has no fire coverage for gold, then yeah. like it, it's sometimes a net negative because then you have to find something to switch into gold. It's probably Makalola, right? Exactly. But if it's Makalola, no yeah. recovery on no, that, and then that has all no... of a sudden. Yeah, it has, I mean, I guess if you're clicking Wish and then you switch out to Makalola, like, that's fine, quote-unquote. But it's still, like, if he click Nasty Plot that turn, then he can fire off, um, make it rain, and even if you knock him off, he can recover it later, and you took permanent chip on your Makalola. I I, I, I I do see ways for low punish to win, but I'd probably still go 55-45 aggrons. Right, I, I think low punish either has to be really creative on how... Uh... On how she gets around the Clefable, or Abbotsford makes a mistake. Um, yeah, it brings but Clefable, like, Clefable in. is like the backbone yeah. of the matchup this this game. Brings Clefable in on a like Moonblast, for example, thinking uh, it won't do that much, and then all it, maybe it specs when oh, he so didn't it, expect yeah, it does sex. like forty five. It does forty five, and, then... and he's like, "Oh no, that's pretty uncomfortable." And then he switches out, and he's at fifty five, and it's like, "All right," and with that. We'll move on to, I believe, the final game of the week. The Norwalk Noiverns versus the Clombrook Kyogres. The Kyogres have had kind of a, a team revamp, I believe. They've got uh, no Raging Bolt anymore, traded it out, and now they have a Gouging Fire. They've got a Moltres. Uh, uh, they've got, I believe, the Zapdos Galar is new. <laughs> And uh, Noivern's still rocking the same guys, the same kind of uh, stall plus Metagross plus Valiant. I think uh, this is an interesting matchup. I, I find what Clombrook almost always tries to do every game is set up. And I wonder if they're still going to try to do that in the face of two unaware Pokemon and a Ditto. Uh, it, it's never worked for them. The, the, the like, four setup Pokemon they always run. I wonder if they're still going to try and do it. I think Gouging Fire could be banded and actually do pretty well this game. I hope it is banded. Um, I, I think Moltres, like, you know, you could be... Uh, I, I'm assuming Metagross is going to run Rock Slide. That's what you do when you face uh, Moltres is you run Rock Moves. I, I, I think Metagross has, like, an alright matchup with, like, Rock Slide plus a uh, Fighting Move for King Gambit. You don't even really need a steel move. You could have Earthquake for like a Terra Poison Out Creamy or Tentacruel. And then you could have <coughs> like the Psych... Or you don't even need Earthquake because you could be the Psychic move. And then you could hit Zapdos as well. And then you could have like uh, Agility if you really want. Or you could just be four moves uh, with an Earthquake to hit Gouging Fire maybe. Uh, I, I think Valiant could probably be Specs. Like Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt Specs I think looks pretty good here. Um, Thunderbolt plus Moonblast, obviously. Uh, plus the the fighting move for King Gambit. Um, I I do think like Kyogre's way of winning is like banded gouging fire, and then like 
Could you run Banded King Gambit? I, I, I just think instead of setup, if he... Because obviously there's so many Pokemon that just don't really care about setup this game. I, I think you could actually try Calm Mind Stored Power. Because Stored Power, it, kind, it doesn't stop unaware, but it kind of like stops unaware, I guess is the best way. It, it, it basically ignores unaware because the boost, the Stored Power gets boosted itself. And that raw base power boostage, if you're like Agility plus Stored Power, uh, there is no dark type i believe on uh noivern's side so if your agility calm mind stored power and you just start blasting stored powers off um plus like maybe shadow ball to hit metagross <coughs> I, I i don't despise that set on articuno galar because it does break through it, it'll take a long time to break through skeledurge if skeledurge is um but skeledurge you know it, it's not necessarily killing you back especially if you tear out of your psychic uh, typing um th those are kind of the ways i can see clombrook winning because i can see noivern's kind of just getting up their hazards tentacruel is the um rapid spinner so uh you can rapid spin kind of decently well because skeledurge is weak to water so uh, i don't know if he necessarily wants to come in on tentacruel if i'm being honest if it's like no attack investment tentacruel which they usually are they're usually support you probably like don't take half from surf or whatever water move they have and you probably don't take half from knockoff either so you probably can come in on rapid spin and then the hazards are up and then if gouging's banded it's taking hazards uh which would be problematic uh so like if claude is just hazards i think that's fine my Lodix defensive i think gouging it, it, even if it is banded and i can't like it, it's good like dragon claw will do a lot but it won't necessarily two it ko um I don't know. I think it's kind of a uh, a difficult game just based on the way Kyogre's plays. What do you think? I think the biggest threat that Kyogre's has is that Gapdos. I think Banded Brayford looks incredibly free outside of Metagross and Minior, both of which really don't want to take a Banded CC, especially if Metagross is like an offensive set, which would mean it doesn't want to be... Uh, it's, it's not going to be as bulky as it wants to be. Which basically just it's, just it's just a lot of 50 50s uh when Gapdos comes out because Dirge is going to be taking over 50 percent especially yeah maybe it, it'll be taking around 50 percent from banded gray bird banded and Gapdos does sudden, look good yeah it just it can do so much breaking <laughs> against norwalk's team which is very very slow uh the nature of stall yeah i um, i think like uh what you have to do against noiverns like last week when uh valiance was prepping for noiverns and what we ended up he he had like screens grim snarl i think and i was just like i don't really see the point of that what are you setting up screens for you know what i mean i uh, right. we, we just put, we, we just put we just put choice band on the grim snarl and he switched to claude Zyre, i think on grim snarl and took like 80 yep. percent from throat from chop throat chop yeah i remember watching that happen <laughs> It, it's yeah. it, I, I think the way to beat noiverns because he's running on aware mons like this is just like specs or band just make them as strong yep. as possible and try and hammer away at these guys you know what i mean exactly because so, like we, we, we've been calling norwalk's team stall but it's not really stall it's just bulky yeah it's, and what that means is that um if you hit him hard enough it will fall apart um and that just makes it really hard yeah, so oh. I I think like run up with double band. I I, I don't see any reason not to on gouging. Cause you're you're never yeah, gonna sweep. You're you're never gonna get the dragon dances on gouging, or you might even get them. It doesn't matter, right? You know what I mean? It doesn't. They, they, and if you do get them and you end up losing to a ditto, what's the point? So it's like, <clears throat> uh, don't really try to sweep. Just have band. You don't really have anything that can run specs other than like mole trace maybe specs moltres actually doesn't look terrible hurricane hurricanes from specs um, moltres and then there's, there's actually yeah. no there's no resist really Club's air probably eats it alive but it's not really doing anything back other than clicking toxic yeah i mean it, it probably does like 40 if it's specs moltres because yeah. moltres is a special like flamethrower it's probably safer in most scenarios yeah. especially if milo doesn't come no it, it should come it, it, i mean you'll have yeah if you just u-turn hurricane flamethrower i think like that's not terrible um yeah 
like like specs but you, you could be defensive because you need defensive pieces as well but just run instead of running setup run like banded stuff run <coughs> I, I i know i mentioned stored power but choice specs articuno galar run freezing glare uh run freezing yep. glare shadow yep, ball that moves me usage finally R run freezing glare shadow ball hurricane or air slash or whatever it gets you could run that too it gets, i think it gets u-turn as well uh run that um that looks pretty good here too because he has no dark type and uh you could have shadow ball for metagross I, I i don't hate that either just just, just uh you know el creamy doesn't really need to come uh avoid it i would say it doesn't do anything i mean it could be the store power stuff again but again like metagross is there anyways um i i do think like kyogres has a chance this game but i'm worried about their inclinations in terms of how they like to play the game and i do uh trust like iron valiant here like i think that could be specs too and then that's dangerous and i think metagross with like the right coverage could be dangerous i i am leaning slightly towards noiverns probably 60 40 that's probably what i would do too um especially because i think there is a threat from noiverns that we haven't really talked about yet um yeah i think it, i would call this his sleeper pick for the season uh i think choice specs terra normal the dunsparce clicking boom burst looks really really good it breaks yeah. open everything on the team with it forces stuff. it forces king gambit to come in early too which you really right. don't want but to gambit do. i bet that's taking like 40 50 percent yeah it's probably 40 so uh oh wow it takes 53 to 62 if it's max hp yeah so the dunsparce actually probably gets kills just by clicking specs boom burst yeah um, the, the, that, that's a set i brought uh in another league one time and uh in mocks or i didn't do mocks like it, all of the calcs i did it did so much work people sleep on the power of terra normal boom burst especially on specs even though the mon only has 80 special attack yeah um, i i i think the dunsparce could come here very easily terra i, I think mini or right, probably I shouldn't just, come um I, yeah i i agree i just i don't see a single way that Clombrook switches in to uh the Don Sparse without sacrificing one of his most important endgame clears. Yeah, you would have to be like assault best King Gambit, which would be But yeah, but kind yeah, of actually, lame. Would it be though? Because then it kind of stops special valiant sets, like with Aura Sphere at least. Um it would still die to CC. So it, you're flipping a coin in that regard. But I, I would bet if Valiant, it's... sometimes a coin flip is as good as it gets. Yeah, I would bet if Valiant specs or Sphere would probably still kill King Gambit through the assault vest, or it would do like eighty, maybe, maybe kill something like that. I have more faith in King Gambit than that. Now I got to find out. Um, jeez. Okay, you might be right. Yeah, okay. It doesn't even need the specs to still kill through AV. It does 93 to 110 without the specs. Yeah, it's, it's four Wait, times. I might, think, I might have calculated with booster. Hold on. Um, well, booster is yeah, the same. Okay. Or actually, it's worse than specs. But Well, okay, I, I did plus one, and then there was a booster on top of it. So, so yeah, it does, it does plenty. Yeah, so... AV would not save him, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's interesting i do think like there's a way with those sets that we mentioned for clombrook to win i don't really you know trust it so i'm probably going to go norwalk if i had to pick i'm, I'm going to go 60 go norwalk too um i think norwalk's threats uh or i guess threat because like there's only really valiant and dedon sparse in terms of like identifiable threats but that's just kind of, that's just kind of how norwalk's team functions it's like yeah you bring two it, threats it's, it's and four like yeah there's there, there's not really um, a bunch of identifiable threats from game to game, but they just kind of break it down slowly, and they they do it like all together. It's not one mon you use, you're, you're losing to you. Um, but what that ends up uh, happening in this case is that like now, since there's no real identifiable threats, things like banded gouging or banded gapdos, I think especially banded gapdos look really really dangerous, and there's not a ton of counterplay available. Yeah, I will say what's funny is if it is banded Gapdos and it kills something and then Ditto comes in, he actually can't do anything about that either if it's Scarf Ditto. Uh, True. 
he because would... Braper, yeah, Braper does go just as hard into Clonbrook, but he, I guess you can hope for a flame body proc into Moltres, but that's like yeah, that's flame body on Moltres or go King Gambit um, and hope he doesn't click CC or go yeah, Gao Jing. Go... Since, since it'll be since it'll be scarf ditto probably, um, gouging will eat a hit and then be able to revenge, I guess, but then you're trading HP on gouging. Yeah, because you you have to take two brave birds too, so you'd probably be taking and eight. rocks. Yeah, if rocks are up, which they should be, because Claude Zyre is the master. They should be because Tenacruel. Yeah, Claude Zyre is the master of. Uh, yep. What's it called? Hazards. All right, and with that, I believe we are done with the pickums for week six of the PBO. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me, Chestnuts, this week. And we are out. Peace.